This presentation is about applying for a high degree by research admission and scholarship at Griffith University. I'm Laurie Joyce, I'm the Senior Manager, Governance and Operations in the Griffith Graduate Research School and I'm going to introduce you to the research uh, programs offered at Griffith University and the qualification requirements that you need for admission to those degrees. The Griffith Graduate Research School is a dedicated point of contact for all PhD and research degree inquiries. The staff are here to help you complete your application and provide any support that you might need. At Griffith University we have the doctorate research degrees as well as research master's degrees. The doctorates is the highest level qualification. Normally they are three and a half to four years full time to complete. Uh, all of these degrees contain a minimum two-thirds independent research project. Most candidates at Griffith University are enrolled in the Doctor of Philosophy or the PhD program, which is 100% research working under the direction of your supervision team. We also offer the named PhD and professional doctorates that you can see listed there. Each of these include a coursework component as well as the research project. Uh, and as the name suggests, they are each focused on an area of professional practice. For the research master's degrees, the Master of Philosophy or the MPhil is the 100% research degree. We also have some specialist master's degrees, um, again, each in an area of professional practice. For the duration for these programs, they do vary. They range from one year full time up to two years full time. Uh, if you do uh, if you are admitted into the Master of Philosophy program, if you're progressing well, you can actually apply to upgrade into the PhD program after six to 12 months. In terms of the qualification requirements, they do vary for admission and for scholarship. For scholarship consideration at Griffith University, you need to hold a bachelor degree with class one honours. Uh, if you're doing a master's or an equivalent qualification, that means a grade point average of six on a seven point scale. Uh, the other important component is the amount of research in your prior, prior qualification, such as your master's. That research does need to be at least one full-time semester or trimester in duration. At Griffith University, that equates to 40 credit points. And the grade for that research component also needs to be a six on a seven point scale. If you're applying for admission to a doctoral degree, so that's without a scholarship, the qualification requirement is a bachelor with honours class 2A. And the equivalent for that, if you're doing a master's or other qualification, is a grade point average of 5.5 out of 7. However, for the research component, you will still need a grade of 6 out of 7. For the research master's degrees, the qualification requirements all do vary. Uh, so I would recommend that you have a look on our Degree and Career Finder site on the Griffith University site uh, and you can have a look at each of the qualification requirements for those programs. If you are interested in the Master of Philosophy, that program does require completion of a Bachelor with Honours Class 2B uh, and the equivalent of that again is a grade point average of 5 on the 7 point scale and the research component grade of 5. For the other research master's programs, some of them don't require you to have completed a prior research component. If your qualification doesn't contain enough research or your honours results or your grades are too low, you can still apply for admission or for scholarship if you have any additional evidence of your research ability. Most commonly a journal article or a conference paper is presented as research evidence. There are conditions around each of these activities for them to be considered as part of your equivalency case and you can find more information on those requirements on our research study website. If you do already meet the qualification requirements, we recommend that you do still provide the, uh, any additional evidence of your research ability, particularly if you're applying for scholarship as it can be taken into consideration in the scholarship ranking process. Uh, it is important that you use our CV template that's available on our website. It does ensure that we have all of the information that we need to assess your research outputs or experience for your equivalency. 
In terms of pathways, if for example, you're completing one of the degrees listed there, so that might be a bachelor degree without honours or a master's degree that does not contain the semester of research, there are pathway programs offered at Griffith University that you may like to consider. Uh, the most common pathway would be the honours degree, which is uh, one year. Griffith University also offers a suite of graduate diploma of research, research studies programs and there's also a range of master's programs that contain a research component that would allow you to then progress on to a high degree via research program. You will find an interactive pathway tool on our research study website where you can explore your options for pathways to a high degree via research program. The graduate diploma programs that I referred to, you can see the list here, they are in a range of disciplines. They are one year programs, however, depending on your prior qualification, you can get some credit towards this program. In terms of the application requirements, we have an online application form. Uh, you can start that application at any time and save it and come back to it as needed. Uh, the most important thing that you'll need prior to lodging your application is the agreement of one supervisor um, for your proposed research. So you can browse Griffith University's school or department or research centre websites in your area of interest to find out more about available supervisors and research topics. Each of the schools and departments also has a high degree by research convener and that person can assist you with locating a supervisor if you are having any difficulty. Ensure that you make time to meet with your proposed supervisor to discuss your research proposal as they will work with you to develop or refine your proposal ready for inclusion with your application. So just make sure that you have enough time to do this prior to your application closing date. If you are an international student, you also need to provide evidence of your English language proficiency. If you're just applying for admission, you don't need to provide this evidence with your application. We can issue you a conditional offer for you to provide that at a later date. However, if you wish to be considered for scholarship, you will need to provide the evidence of English with your application. We do also have uh, English language programs offered at Griffith University that you may wish to consider. In terms of other documentation, the research proposal, as I mentioned, will need to be provided with your application. You'll also need to provide two academic referee reports. The online application will ask you to list their details with a contact email address. And when you lodge your application, the system will send an automatic template to those referees to complete. So it is a good idea to let them know that that will be coming their way so that they can complete that in a timely manner for you. And the CV template, as I mentioned, uh, is a great way to make sure that we can consider all of your research experience. In terms of admission and commencement dates, HDI candidates may commence the program in one of four research intakes that we offer throughout the year, and they are offered in February, April, July or October of each year. However, for those HDI programs that include a coursework component that I mentioned, you will need to commence your program on the trimester start date. You can have a look at the Degree and Career Finder website to view all of the uh, program start dates and they will also provide you with the application closing dates. However, if you wish to also apply for scholarship, the closing dates do vary and you will find those closing dates on our scholarship key dates website. My name is Adam Jones, Scholarships Coordinator at the Griffith Graduate Research School and I'll be talking about tuition fees and scholarships. So tuition fees first, we'll start with the good news. So for domestic candidates, there are no fees to pay for research programs. They're covered by the RTP, that's the Research Training Program, domestic fee offsets. So that's a combination of funding from the Commonwealth Government and Griffith University. Domestic candidates are defined as Australian citizens, Australian permanent residents, or citizens of New Zealand. Everybody else though, unfortunately, needs to pay tuition fees in full for the duration of the course. Uh, the exact amount will depend on the school or element where you're enrolled. In terms of the kinds of scholarships, well, living allowance and tuition fee scholarships are the majority of scholarships we'll be talking about here, but we'll touch upon top-up scholarships and a few other scholarship opportunities as well. 
So in terms of the living allowance scholarships, the stipend scholarships, the RTP, uh, that's government funded and the Griffith University equivalent, they're the majority of scholarships we hand out. Uh, they go for three years with a possible six month extension. $27,596 in 2019 and they go up incrementally each year. We'll just take the opportunity to point out the Indigenous scholarship as well. Uh, slightly different selection criteria for that one and also a Indigenous top-up scholarship awarded alongside it worth $10,000 per year. So that brings the total amount to $37,596. And in fact, that top-up scholarship is awarded to any Indigenous applicant who's enrolling with a scholarship. So for example, if you're awarded the RTP or the GUPRAs and you're an Indigenous applicant, you'll get that Indigenous top-up scholarship as well. Top-up scholarships, so uh, just like that Indigenous top-up scholarship I just mentioned, occasionally a school, a group supervisor, uh, possibly industry, will make a top-up scholarship available to a particular applicant. And again, the idea is just to increase the overall annual amount of the scholarship being received. In terms of the benefits and the conditions of the scholarships, but they generally require people to be enrolled full-time and to be enrolled on campus, so scholarships aren't generally awarded to remote candidates. Restrictions on employment, so nine hours a week during business hours, so nine to five. But some pretty generous entitlements as well, so 12 weeks paid sick leave over the course of the scholarship, 12 weeks paid maternity leave, uh, some parenting leave available and also a contribution towards costs associated with relocating to Griffith either from overseas or interstate. In terms of the selection criteria, so that first point is the big one there, so uh, needing to have a first class honours uh, degree or at least demonstrate equivalence. Uh, that can be done via research outputs, research experience, uh, more details available via the website. Beyond that, we'll obviously be looking at the academic merit of your application, uh, so the quality of the qualifications you've received previously as well as things like where those qualifications were received, again, your research background or any research outputs, and also the fit of your proposed research and the supervisors and the area where you'll be enrolling. In terms of getting the application in, so we run one major scholarship round a year at Griffith, two closing dates. First one there, 17th of September, is for international applicants. Slightly later date, 1st of October for domestic applicants. More information can again be found on the website, our key dates page. But I will also flag, you can actually apply at any time um, for the scholarship. You don't need to wait until those deadlines. And we do make some scholarship offers throughout the year to high quality applicants or where there's a need to make that offer earlier on strategic grounds. Some tips on getting your scholarship application in. Some of this hopefully uh, common sense, um, but I will just point out that one point in the middle about following our CV template. Do try and do that. Uh, we've put that together to sort of prompt you to give us the information we're most interested in in assessing your application. So that'll be the one tip I'd give you to take away. Beyond that, if you are interested in applying, you think you meet the selection criteria, these are the steps to follow. Again, they're available on the website and through the application guide. And finally, if you've got any questions for us, feel free to get in touch either by telephone or dropping us an email to the address listed there, and then good luck.